Hi, I'm Aaron Wee. I'm going to go over how I converted this 9-inch South Bend lathe from an AC motor over to a DC motor. Now, this is the original motor here, or I don't know it's original, but it came with the lathe when I got it. It's got the motor here, which is a half horsepower motor, and a tumbler switch for forward, reverse, and stop. I got this DC motor off of eBay. It's a Pacific Scientific, probably a 20, 25 year old motor. It's three horsepower continuous duty, 120 volt. I took the pulley off of the old motor and I put it on here, it matched perfectly. For the wiring, I just mounted it to go around the motor here so it'd stay out of the way of everything, the belts, uh, no matter where I change the belts. But the motor, the wiring comes out of the motor here and follows along into this connection here to the harness that goes down into the control box. The bracket, since of course it's so hard to find brackets for motors that actually fit the motor that you have. Uh, there are a lot of brackets out there, but none of them fit your motor. So I made my own here. I used the high density plastic. I just cut it out with a jigsaw along here. I used Forstner bits to make notches where the bolt holes slide through. Cut a slot right through here. Put a bolt down through the center to hold it in tight. All I do is loosen up these two bolts. Motor slides right out. Then I can put it right back in, tighten it down, and it's done. It doesn't slip at all. The motor does put out a little bit of heat, which is kind of normal for these motors but the heat does not affect this motor bracket here or the wiring. I've got elongated holes back along here so that I can adjust the motor height according to how much tension I want for the belt. Then there are a couple bolts that come in here that connect these brackets with this faceplate. Here's a look from the other side to give you an, an idea, maybe a better view without all the junk that's in the way. From this angle here, you can see where the wiring comes out from the motor. It's just a positive and negative. Runs down through this harness here and up into the control box. Then out the other end of the control box is the power cord, which is just a heavy-duty extension cord. This is a KB Electronics Pentapower DC motor speed control drive, some big long name they have for it. I also bought this used off of eBay for a pretty decent price. This is the fully sealed kind. They've got a kind that uh, isn't fully sealed, usually a little bit less expensive, but this one was such a good price I wasn't going to pass it up. It's got four screws that hold the door in place to make a good seal around it. Uh, this is actually was designed to be used in a wet environment. I think it would work great for the amount of dust or chips that come down into this area. I installed this box down here specifically because I don't have to reach up and over the machine to control the motor. I can just reach down. So while I'm working up there, my hand is just right down here that I can adjust the speeds, turn it on and off, forward, reverse. When I got this, there's a few switches that I needed. It didn't come with the forward, reverse switch. I bought that separately. In the run jog area, I put a power switch. This doesn't really have an on off switch. So hot wire coming right into it means that uh, it is on like this all the time. So I put this switch in here so that I can turn all the power off to the box. Uh, to run it, I just turn the power on, I go into the start position. You can see that it's in the stop right now, so no matter what I do, it won't run. So I can put this into the start. Now when I move these, the machine will operate. Then I can adjust the speed with this knob right here. Put it in the brake position, which slows it down real quick, and down for reverse. Now these forward brake reverse switches are specially designed, the ones from KB Electronics, specially designed with a little locker in it, so that when you switch it into one direction, you can't go from, in this case, reverse to forward in one movement and cause damage to the motor. It will, it will turn it up to try to go to the forward position, but it won't let you go all the way up until you release it. Then there's a little click you'll hear in there when it releases. Then you can move it into the next direction. Great little safety feature. You can just put a regular three pole switch in here, but I went for what they actually recommended. Now the electronics in here are very easy to understand. The manual didn't come with this particular box, but KB Electronics has a manual online Sometimes you might have to get a fuse with it. Mine came with a fuse, but most of the time they don't come with a fuse. You have to buy that separately.
jumpers in here for doing different things, different adjustments you want. All these pots right here for determining jog, maximum speed, minimum speed, your acceleration rate, deceleration rate. If the motor starts to overheat or draw too much amperage, you can set when it cuts off so that you don't damage your motor. And it also protects the box. This one right here is the forward reverse switch. It's a rather large component here. It's got this large capacitor here and then this large portion of the switch. Um, here's where I added in the power switch, the separate power switch, just a switch that I bought at the hardware store. This is very quality built. It's got good solid wiring in it. I'm very happy with the products that KB Electronics makes. Here you can see where the power wire comes in, connects into these here, and then I've got where the DC motor runs out through here. So relatively speaking, this motor conversion was fairly simple. It wasn't quite as intense as I thought it was going to be. So if you have one of the older lays uh, that you would like better speed control on or you need to replace your motor, I highly recommend switching over to a DC motor. Thanks for watching.